Hi guys, Steve here, and on this video I'll be showing you how to play Ark Scorched Earth. Now if you've not played Ark before, I would definitely recommend you watch my beginner's guide to Ark, and start on another map until you know what you're doing, because Scorched Earth is much much harder than the original maps. But if you have played the original Ark, or you're up for a challenge, let's begin. I'll quickly go over joining and creating the game to make sure you pick the right one for you. If you want to play on a map with other people, click join Ark. This will take you to all the multiplayer servers that everyone else can find. The server filter in the bottom left shows that these are all official. Then at the top you have the selection bars of the kind of server you're looking for. I've just clicked the Scorched Earth filter. This one to the right of it is Normal Arc plus Scorched Earth. You click this box if you're looking for a PvP server. But to be honest, since I put cross server transfers in, where huge tribes that have been playing for years can come to your server and wipe you out, there's not much point anymore unless you are one of those huge tribes. PvE is just for people who want to build, play the game and don't want to fight. However, a lot of griefing goes on where you can build a base and then somebody just builds pillars around it. There's nothing you can do about it as you can't attack other tribes and the map's filled with other people's bases so it might be hard to find somewhere to build. If you go down to server filters in the bottom left, you can select the unofficial ones. These are run by players who rent their own servers and may now be the best ones to play on. Most of these have boosted farming and taming so you can build and tame things a lot quicker. But the biggest downside is, if they stop paying for the server, it closes down and you lose everything. Host Local lets you play the game on your machine. You can select play single player just to play with yourself, and then in the top left select which map you want to play on. The Ark is the original island, but we want to play on Scorched Earth, and you have a centre map below that. The rest of the page lets you alter the game settings. You can boost how much resources you farm, how fast you tame dinos, or make the knights go faster, anything really. Host non dedicated multiplayer session lets your friends join your game on your machine, but you do need a good internet connection or they won't be able to join. If you leave all the settings as you are, you get the same experience you would on an official server, except one which is difficulty level. This is to select the maximum level of the creatures on the map. With 3.0 you get a maximum level of 120 dinos, and with 5 their maximum level is 150. Make sure you select the right difficulty you want, as if it's too low you're only going to get low level dinos. For this demo I'm going to play on a single player game. It'll take a while to load the game and create the world, so I'll just skip that. And now it takes you to the character creation screen. You can alter your appearance on the left hand side, You've got preset body shapes on the boxes above. In the top left you can select between male and female. I've already created my own preset body type so I'm going to load that. Name yourself in the bottom right. And finally select the area where you want to spawn at. I'm going to choose Midlands 3 as it's out of the way and got everything I need. Here we go for a brand new adventure. And instantly get killed by a wolf. <laughs> Not the start I'd like, but you better get used to dying. Let's try again. Check around first to make sure you're safe. Then start gathering resources. I already know where I'm going to build, so I'm going to make my way there now. And on the way, collect everything I need to make basic tools. leveled up so I just make the pickaxe, put my points into health, learn a spear and gram to protect myself, and a hatchet to give me wood. Two points left so nothing I can get for that. Luckily I've come across some dead thorny dragons, so they're going to give me a good amount of hide, which I can use for sleeping bags to start with. As you probably know the axe harvests more hide than the pick. It's best to always go for the simple bed as it's reusable, but that unlocks at a high level, so the sleeping bags will just do for now. I'll equip the spear I've got off a body, then make some more. I'm moving around a lot, so I'm going to level up weight so I can carry more stuff. I've got meat so I need a fire to cook it, and I think I'm going to start on my base straight away. 
At this low level, if there's a heatwave, clothes won't protect me, and making a building will help me level up quicker. But it's entirely up to you what you want to learn. Water is hard to find in scorched earth. And if you look at a water bar on the bottom right, you'll notice when I run, it goes down really quickly. So walk everywhere you go, and only run when you have to. You can get water from these blue water jug bugs. Run up to its side and press E. When you've took a drink, it'll fly away. Those will keep you alive if you can't find a permanent water source. Speaking of which, I've come to where I want to build, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm just collecting this fibre. Scattered around the map of Scorched Earth, you can find these water veins. You can take a few drinks of water from them as they are now, but later on you can build a well on top, which holds more water, is easy to access, and you can build pipes from it. The water replenishes over time, both on the vein and the well. I'll place my first foundation down here, as this is where I'm going to have my base. These wells are fine to give your tribe water and irrigate your crops, but you can't connect an industrial cooker to them later on to make kibble. You'll find the best source of water at the obelisks, but many tribes might build at these, so you'll be competing for resources. This one's red. This is green. And this is at blue. An alternative to having your base here is to build somewhere else and extend the water pipes down to the water. There's also a dry riverbed running down the centre of the map. The blue spots represent where the standing water is like this. Pipes from these and the obelisks are the only kind that can supply water to the industrial cooker. Anyway, let's carry on playing. I'm going to build a less secure, more PvE building here, as at the end of this video I'm going to show the base that we built on a PvP server, step by step, over the months until it was finished. So, you guys finally get a tour of our Scorched Earth base, and a look of how it was built. I'll carry on collecting resources. I'm overburdened, so I'll make a fire to cook the meat. Level up health, because I'll die easily at the moment. And learn the thatch doorway. And the sleeping bag, so I can spawn back here. Then with three points left, I'll go for the door. Let's see what I need. More thatch. I'm just going to put the campfire down first and cook the meat. I'll put all in the fire to burn and save weight. And I'll place the thatch wall so I'm not carrying it. Oh crap, the Argent's seen me. Oh, it's gonna kill me! <laughs> Ooh, that was close. Look at that for a good shot. And that's made me level up as well. Oh, the metal hatchet's good at this stage. I'll level up health, and I'll sort the engrams out in a sack. I'll just equip the metal hatchet so I can harvest more hide from a bird. I want to get my simple bed up and running as soon as possible, because I need to spawn back at base as I'll be dying all the time. I'll take this meat to cook it. I won't bother with a prime meat because it spores ridiculously quick. Oh, and in the daytime when it's hot, don't stand next to a fire, as the extra heat will kill you. Look how fast my health's melting away. While I've got lots of berries, I might as well show you an eating trick. Instead of selecting them, then clicking use item every time you want to eat one, drag them to your hotbar and hold down that corresponding number. This way you'll eat all of them quickly in one go. That'll save you loads of time and clicking. I'm going to die anyway, so I might as well get it over with. <clears throat> when you 
When you respawn, use the obelisk to triangulate your position. There are your main markers, then from there, memorize the mountains and cliffs close to your base. That way you'll be able to find your way home. My base is in between red and blue obelisk, but more closer to red. When you're getting chased by things that want to kill you, jump on the rocks and hopefully I'll get stuck behind them. If I don't give up, or if you aggro new ones, lead them away from where you want to go, then let them kill you. That way you know your path is going to be clear next time you spawn. Okay, I've made my way back to the base, but I got attacked on the way and I'm nearly dead. So I'm going to put some sleeping bags down so I can spawn here. I'd prefer a simple bed, but I'm not at a level to make them yet. You also get quite a bit of XP from making them. I'll just place these down as I'm about to die. I'll cut my own body up to eat the meat. Is that cannibalism? Or just recycle it? You're going to die a lot from the heat when you're low level, but you can make things easier by transferring a high level character in instead. That's easier than walking. Now I'm just going to pick my stuff back up and go out and get more resources. Oh, there's a little Jaboa. Look how cute and fluffy it is. Let's kill it. Ah! Huh. I've pulverized it out of existence. Well, I've levelled up, so I'm going to spec my points, and choose my engrams. I need more health for fighting. And I'm going to learn the clothes for the small bit of armour it gives me. That's the whole set. But I need to go back to base again because the heat's going to kill me. See how fast my health's going down without any clothes. And when I'm wearing cloth armour, it virtually makes no difference. Later on you need to use a combination of things to keep you cool. Like specking into fortitude, wearing desert then ghillie armour, and building your living quarters in your base out of adobe. I use the materials I've got to build the sides of my base. And I'll try and place them before I die. Running that small distance is used to pour my water, so I need another drink. I misplaced that one, so I just make another. I wanted to get the sides up in case anything attacks me and then I can just hide inside. That should only protect you for a short time, so I'd need to go out and kill the attacker before it destroyed my heart. Well, I died again, then went out and got more resources to carry on building. So I'm going to start extending my heart outwards. I'm going to build this up to a 2x2, two two, then a 2x3. Two the meat's cooked, so I'll just take that. Then build the rest of the walls. I've almost levelled up, so I need to decide what I'm going to spec into. I'm going to go for Fortitude. 
so I don't die as much from the heat. I could learn ceilings, but the most important thing you can build at this stage is a simple bed. So now, every time you die from heat, you can just spawn back at your base. And you won't have to work your way back from a random spawn point. I'm going to place the walls I've built. Now I can go out hunting to get some more hide to make another bed. You'll need to because you'll die so much from the heat. It runs off because it can't get to me, but he'll be back. Level 96 was a bit high for a new character, but I managed it. I'll collect its items, then harvest it for hide. Her shoes are slightly better, so I'll equip those. And again, I'm going to level up Fortitude. I'm going to learn the ceiling so I can enclose my hut, and I'm going to pick storage box so I can keep all my items at the base. That way I can empty my inventory and don't have to spec into weight so much. I've built my box so I just need to place it. I try and get it close to the wall so I can get as many in as I can. Now I just need to unload my items and sort them out. Now it's dark, you don't want to wander too far from your camp. So just collect resources in the close vicinity to it. I'm just getting enough wood to build my second bed. That's leveled me up, so I'm going to put my point into Fortitude. And I'm going to learn Mortar and Pestle. It'll take up all my points, but next time I can learn Narcotics. Yep, I think that's the best for now. I've built some extra boxes, so I'm just going to place those. and fill them up with everything I'm left carrying. With those placed I can now put the second bed down and start extending the hut to a 2x3 because we need the room. You could roof off the top now, but I like my room's two wall tiles high. It gives me more headroom, and it saves me from redoing it later when I have to put higher equipment in. I've just levelled up again, so I'm going to put my points into stamina this time. I'll be hunting more, so I might need to run away. Let's see what I can learn now. 
I still think narcotics is best, and if I make loads it'll give me a lot of XP. And I'll just save the other points for later. That was a bit close. I've leveled up again and this time I'm going to go health to help me keep me alive when I'm hunting. I'm going to learn spark powder for now just to give me XP. A boomerang to knock out your bows and help me hunt. And bolus to stop small carnivores attacking me. As I'm getting a good supply of hiding, I'm going to learn a tent as it's the only thing that can keep your life through the heat wave. Clay to build adobe structures when I unlock them. I'm just going to go for a club for a backup because I want to start taming dinos. And for the rest I'm going to unlock stuff that will give me XP from building it. Like cementing paste and gunpowder. Okay I've made some bowlers so let's test them out. kill small carnivores like this to get XP, but I'll just mainly use the bowlers if I can't get away from them. But they will not work on the larger carnos. The heatwave started and it's killing me. I need to go back to get my gear, but as you can see, being outside is draining my health quickly. Being in the thatch hut gives me a little bit of protection, and my health's not going down so fast, but I'm still going to die and need a bed to respawn. I've just made the mortar and pestle, so I'll put that down. And now I can start turning my rotten meat to narco berries into narcotics. And making a lot of these will also make me level up quicker. Watch my experience bar on the right. When you go out harvesting, one of the things you've got to look out for is rock elementals. They disguise themselves as a sandstone rock. When you get close to them, they'll get up and try and crush you. It will throw a rock at you at long range, so run away diagonally to miss it. I farmed enough material to finish my hut, so let's get to it. Now for the ceilings. I better get a drink before I make the rest. And now my house is enclosed. It will protect me from the sandstorms and keep me a tiny bit cooler from the heat. I've leveled up again and now it allows me to unlock the whip. This will let you pick up and farm items on the ground much faster than you can do by hand. It's the best way to farm berries, fibre and cactus sap until you've tamed your own creatures to do so. To make the whip you'll need silk and you get that by harvesting the flowers in scorched earth. Now that I've completed the thatch hut I want to start converting it into adobe to give me better protection from the heat. So I've put all the cactus sap and sand I've found into the mortar and pestle to make clay. This is one of the ingredients you need to make adobe structures. They're the next things I'm going to unlock when I've got enough points. You get cactus by whipping the small ones with flowers on. Or cutting down the larger ones. And you get sand by breaking down the sandstone coloured rocks. 
Although, if you're going to build on a large scale, it's best to tame dinos to harvest these. A sandstorm's about to start, so I'll go outside and show you what happens when you get caught in one. It does several things to hinder you. First, it reduces your visibility. But later on, you can make desert goggles to help you see through the sand. It also drains your stamina, and the stamina of any creature you're riding, and it drains your water. So the best thing to do when one hits is just to go inside and close the door, until it's over. Other weather that causes you problems later on is the electrical storm, as this shuts down everything electrical, power generators, refrigerators, and your turrets which leaves you defenceless. I've levelled up again so I'm going to pick arrows so I can go hunting, and adobe foundation so I can start converting my building but I don't have enough points for the wall yet. I've built the adobe foundation, so time to place it. And that's the start of making it our proper building. To show you why it's so important to build your living quarters out of adobe, I've set up this demonstration. The temperature is 29 celsius and I'm wearing cloth armour. In the thatch hut, I have an insulation of 302, and my health remains stable. So I'm safe in here under normal conditions. In the wood hut, I've started to lose health, and my water's slowly going down. That's because my insulation in here is minus 372, and it's slowly killing me. In the stone hut, my insulation has now dropped down to minus 912, and I'm losing my health and water a lot quicker. However, worst of all is a metal hut. Here my insulation has dropped down to minus 2532, and my health's melting away as I'm being cooked alive. This would be even worse if it was a heatwave happening. So the best material to build your living quarters out of in Scorched Earth is adobe. My health started to go up again because it's safe in here. That's because the insulation in this adobe hut is 505. More than any other structure and will give you the most protection from the heat. But like stone, adobe is pretty weak. So if you're on a PvP server, you'll need to build the inside living quarters of your base out of adobe, then protect the outside with a metal shell. As even though adobe is harder to make than stone, it's a lot weaker. I hit this stone wall five times with a metal pick, and it only did five damage. However, when I hit the adobe wall the same amount of times, it did 88 damage. It will take forever to convert this building into adobe by hand, so let's tame some dinosaurs. I've only got three narco arrows which I've found, so I'm going to have to do most of it with a catapult and stones. You usually need two people for this, but I'm going to try and tame an ankylo and a dodec, as they take the longest, then a morellatop and a raptor all at the same time. It's a bit nuts to be honest, so if you're by yourself, you should only go for a Morella top and a Raptor. Try and find low level ones to start with, as you don't want to waste all day and night taming high ones. I won't have a saddle for these until I've leveled up. So if you're on a server with other people, you can give them a resources and ask them to make them. Or if you're by yourself, you're just going to have to wait, or cheat and spawn one in. But that'll put you on a slippery slope, as you'll then be tempted to spawn everything in. You can also use a boomerang to knock creatures out, but I kind of use it as a last resort, because it takes so long to come back to you.
hopefully one of his knock arrows should finish it off. Yep, good it's down. All I've got to do now is give it berries to feed it. Knock out berries to keep it knocked out. I'm going to try and keep it unconscious just with narco berries, as I want to try and save the narcotics to make narco arrows, but I see how it goes as I might need to use them. It's going to take hours till that's tamed, so in the meantime I'm going to get myself a jaboa. Use a boomerang to knock it out in one shot. Then feed it Y plant seeds, as that's its favourite food, and the only real use for the Y plant. Its torpor will go down fairly quickly, so you need to give it narco berries to keep it under. These things are a really fast tame, and should only take about 5 minutes. The purpose of a jaboa is to tell you when the weather's about to change. You can find out how to do that in my jaboa weather shower video in my playlist at the end. He's awake, so I just name him. and press E to pick him up. I've died too much and it's held me up, so I'm going to have to scrap my plans for a doe deck for now, and go straight for a raptor and a morella top. That's going to be okay for several hours, so let's get a raptor to bring meat in. Aggro, then bowler it, then knock it out. A level 28 will be quick to tame, but it'll be really weak, so you've got to be careful with it. I want to go out and get more meat, and then pop back. Well, I tamed it and started leveling it up, but I got ambushed by two other raptors, run out of stamina, and they killed it. So, I had to tame a new higher one, and by the time that was done, the Ankylo had finished taming as well. I've now got resources to build a well, so I'm going to build and place that. The wells only fit on the water vein, and you can't change the direction they're facing. They just click in. You can now see that the water's filling up to a maximum of a thousand. And you can drink straight from a well. An easy to tame and useful creature is a Morella Top. It's Scorched Earth's equivalent of a camel. To be honest, I'd probably make this the first creature you tame. It will harvest a lot of berries for the rest of your herbivores, like the Dodec and Ankylo, so it will make it easier to get narco berries to tame other creatures. It can hold water so you can drink from it, and you can use it for a mount and carry your resources. But don't try fighting with it because it's really weak. If you attack one by itself, it will try and run away, but if there's more than one, they'll try and herd together and attack you. Like I said, this is probably the best farming creature to start with. However, a major drawback is it's too big to fit through a normal dino gate, so you're going to have to knock some walls down to get it in your building, or leave it outside where it might get killed. So make sure you build a fence around it to try and keep it safe. The Morella Top can also harvest a lot of cactus, without need to make adobe to upgrade my building. So while that's been tamed, I'm going to get myself a doe deck. With this I'll be able to harvest the sandstone rocks, and easily get sand which I've combined with a cactus sap to make clay, which is used to make adobe. This one seems to be stuck in a tree for some reason. But it's got a really bad headache.
Okay, that's down, so I need to collect some more berries for it. While it's being tamed, I'll go out and get some more resources. I farmed enough to make a tent, and this will protect me when it's a heat wave. As these could happen at any time, you could carry the tent around with you. But it does weigh a lot, and this early on in the game, it does cost a lot of resources. So if you get killed and lose it, it would be a big loss. That's why I leave mine at base in case a heat wave happens. Okay, let's see how the tames are getting on. Like I've said before, I always try and use narco berries to keep the herbivores knocked out, so I can save the narcotics I made to make narco arrows. An umbrella tops is almost done. Okay, what shall I call it? I know. What do you call a camel with three humps? Hump three. You find that funny. Right, I'm going to lead it back to my base and stand it next to my well. Because when you do this, it'll automatically fill up with water. There you go. As it's taking a drink, it's filling its hump with water. Now when you're away from your base, just go to it and open the menu wheel, and then take a drink. And that will keep you alive when you're away from water. I can use this Marilla Tops now to get Cactus Sap and start upgrading my base to Adobe. I need somewhere to keep the creatures I'm taming, so I've placed down a foundation outline to show how big the building's going to be. Now I'm going to convert the house to Adobe. I won't need a double doorway soon, so I'm going to take that down to give me more space. Entrances are always the weakest place to attack, so I like to double them up. Now I need to take the dodeck out to get more sand. The rock elemental is a big upgrade from this, and much better at farming than the doe deck. But it's going to be a long while before you got everything together to tame one of those. From now on, most of my time is going to be taken up by farming resources. So I'm going to skip forward all the boring stuff, and just show the times when I'm building. Of course, you can design your building as big or as small as you want. If you're on a solo or PvE server, you can take your time as you don't have to worry about people attacking you. But if you're on a PvP server, it's best to build small, really tough buildings so it's harder to raid. You don't want to spend ages building a huge structure that's left open and unfinished with no defences. And like I said, at the end of this video, I show the base that we built on a PvP server in Scorched Earth. That's the sides done, so I just need to do the last two foundations, then the ceiling. Now for the roof. That sounds Jaboa, by the way. Telling us the weather's about to change. And that's our house completely finished in Adobe. This will help keep us cooler when it's really hot. Now that the main living quarters is finished, I can start work on a dino enclosure. I'm going to build the outer walls two towers high, then enclose a roof so wild argents can't attack the tames. I would definitely recommend keeping all your dinosaurs inside. Wild wyverns do fly around and attack tame dinosaurs if they're not under cover. Then finally put one door in to give me access to the whole complex. All our creatures are nicely hidden away now, so I'll just give you a quick run around the outside to show you how neat it is. I prefer one big building over many little ones, because there's less places for raiders to hide.
That's this stage done. So the next phase I'll be converting this thatched dino pen into an adobe one. I'll start off by replacing the foundations. Then the walls. Then the ceiling tiles. Okay, that's the bottom floor done for now. So let's have a look at it from the outside. Only a bit of a Moralitov swamp will be sticking through the roof. But I'm going to add another floor on top of this so that won't matter. The dinos are blocked into my base at the moment so I need to make a doorway to get them out. If you destroy the walls and try and place a gateway, it won't let you, as the ceiling tiles above are blocking you from placing it. So you need to destroy the two tiles above. And now you can place a gateway down just fine. However, because the gateway is four tiles high, and I want to add an extra floor to this building, I'm going to put in the structures of the top floor before I put a gateway down. Because if I put a gateway in now, it might block me from building the walls around it. Okay, that's the surrounding structures built. So when I put a gateway in now, it won't block me from building anything, because it's already in place. Just make sure that's aligned up properly with no gaps. Yep, it's fine. Adobe doors are thicker than the normal reinforced ones, and the gap's too narrow for Argens to fly through, so you might want to swap those out for reinforced ones later. The foundations are high, so I'm going to put a ramp there to help the dinos get up. The dodec will fit through the doorway fine. But when I tried Yankio, it got stuck. Not from the width of a gateway, but for some reason, my head hitbox is too high, even though it looks like my head's well below the ceiling. So I had to delete the ceilings further back and create a hole in a roof 2x2 wide, so that would give my head enough clearance. Now I can ride Yanklo through the doorway without any problems. The Morella top, however, is a different story. This is too big to fit through a normal dino gateway, even if you use reinforced doors. The only way to get this one out is to destroy the side of a building two tiles wide. I know it's a pain, but it's the best way to keep it safe. When we wanted to use a Morella top all day, we knocked the wall down and filled it up with thatch. Then, at the end of the day when we wanted to log off, we destroyed the thatch and then rebuilt the wall again properly. I'll show you the space in the dino pen, now we've moved all the creatures out. Because this base is fairly wide, later on in the game you can build another level on top of it to give you more space. This is my new top floor, and I can sort the room designs out later. Don't have one big open room like this because it's structurally weak, and if somebody gets into raid you, they have access to everything you've got. So it's always best to create a maze of rooms. 
and put lots of windows around so you can shoot at any raiders or just have a nice view of what's going on outside. That's my basic building done, so I'll now go over creatures I've tamed and in what order. My first small corno would be a raptor to bring in meat, but my first main harvesting dino would be a morella top, so I could get berries but more importantly narco berries to tame the other creatures. My next two farming dinos would be a dodec and an ankylo. You definitely need the dodec to start on the adobe base. They take about the same amount of time to tame, so it's best to tame them both at once. When you need chitin to make cementing paste, choose a wolf as you get more than you would with a sabre. Plus, you don't have to learn or make a saddle for it. Then, get an argent as you can move around and scout easily and carry stuff around. I'll show you what the base looks like from the air before we get onto the scorched earth general information. If you're on a PvP server, you'll need to build a metal shell around its base to protect it. Because it's so hot in Scorched Earth, there's only a few types of armour you can wear that doesn't kill you from the heat. The first armour set you can get is a cloth one. Because it's the first you learn, you're going to have to make do. I'm slowly dying because it's so hot, as my insulation is only 111. The next best armour set to wear is a desert one, as this has took my insulation up to 158, and the rate that I'm losing health is slowed, but when you've levelled up and got more fortitude you won't lose any. The best armour set you can wear in this heat is a ghillie armour. My insulation has now gone up to 186, and the rate I'm losing health at has almost stopped. And I've got a little moth that's coming to shot to say hello. Get away! All resources in Scorched Earth are pretty rare, but the best place to find metal is at the base of these three long thin mountains around a green obelisk. Everywhere else is just a few clumps of metal nodes scattered around the map. In the bottom left you see a second red flame icon, plus the screen's gone orange and blurred, that means there's a heat wave happening, and it's going to quickly kill me if I don't do something about it. But luckily I brought the tent I made earlier, as I thought something like this would happen. The tent must be on the ground to place it. When you enter, you see a white shield in the bottom left, that means you're protected. Now you can see my health stop going down, as the insulation in here is 603. When you move far away from your base, always take a tent with you, because if you're a long way away and get killed by the heat, you can lose everything you're carrying, but more importantly your mount. Whenever you place a tent down and leave it up, it gets damaged. So once a heat wave is over, pick it up, because if you leave it there, it'll get destroyed. When you can, unlock and make fire arrows, because they're really good at killing everything except fire wyverns, as they have a resistance to fire. Shooting a creature or person adds a burn effect, and that'll do constant damage while we're on fire, so even if you're low level, you can do huge damage to creatures much more powerful than you. To get oil in Scorched Earth, find yourself an oil vein, then place an oil pump on top of it. This will work away non-stop giving you a constant supply of oil. Everyone can access the pump and take oil from it, but that's not a problem because it can give you more oil than you can carry. One of the best pieces of harvesting equipment you can get is a chainsaw. The Thorny Dragon is a wood harvesting creature on Scorched Earth, but we end up just using it to carry wood, as a chainsaw gathers it much faster. Plus this can gather thatch and cactus sap from cactuses, chitin from insects, and meat from everything else. Plus it's good fun and quite effective at killing things.
Meat spoils on scorched earth quicker than any other map, so to double the amount of time it lasts, you need to use preserving salt. Drag the salt into yours or the dino's inventory and it makes it last twice as long. You see it's gone up to almost 5 minutes with the salt, and when I take the salt away it goes below 2.5 minutes. You need to store the preserving salt in these jars, otherwise it goes off. To help with powering your base you can build wind turbines, but to be honest they're pretty useless, unless you're building a deep desert where you get 100% wind. That means your wind turbine will stay on 100% of the time, but everywhere else it would keep shutting down depending on how much wind you get, so you have to use power generators to back it up. Speaking of which, let's cover those now. The devs have added many things to Scorched Earth to make it a complete pain in the arse to live in. From doing small things like making the canteens leak, which don't on any other map, to the most irritating thing in the game, which is making the power generators take damage over time, just by being switched on. So you're forced to repair these a couple of times a day, every day, for as long as you play Scorched Earth. Otherwise all your electrical stuff like turrets, refrigerators will shut down. Now if it was just one generator like this it wouldn't be too bad, but if you've got a bigger base with many power generators, repairing them all every day for months makes you so sick of them that you won't want to play Scorched Earth again. So use as few as possible, as that's the price you have to pay if you want to tame rock elementals, or the main reason why you play on this map, Wyverns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can learn how to tame all these, plus other helpful videos from a playlist at the end. Also, in the next video I'll show the base that we built in Scorched Earth on a PvP server, stage by stage over time. Thanks for watching, and if this was helpful please like and subscribe. Goodbye.